Your presence always makes this event even better and better. From Odessa, Texas, we thank you, friends, for watching and connecting. And the topic of this morning is, you are a hero. How about that? You are a hero. We will discuss more about it, but we want to invite you to download the bulletin. You can do it. Please go to the website, vchurch.us, or also you can just use your camera, point towards the QR code, and download the bulletin of this morning. We want to thank you for your support to our ministry. If you want to help us financially, the way to do it is go to the URL on the screen, vchurch.us forward slash give, or you can send a text message, 432-268-0007. This broadcast comes to you thanks to the faithful contribution of our Victory Church members, and we thank you, friends, for your support. We thank you because you are the ones that make this possible. Those who are watching, you, dear church members that for whatever reason, you are not present here, but you continue supporting our ministry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy, for the music and the songs. We love to sing the Lord to the Lord, and this is great. And thank you, Sebastian, for your work on the IT department. Very well. You are a hero. Worship service number 230, February 21st, 2021. The scripture of the day comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 13. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God will lead you into all truth. He will tell you what will happen in the future. Isn't it that exciting, friends? You tell me if that is not exciting. When... The Lord Jesus is talking to his disciples about the Holy Spirit, especially here in the chapter 16 of the Gospel of John. He describes several features or characteristics or circumstances, things that are around the movement of the Holy Spirit. This probably is one of the most amazing things that we can find in the Scripture. The Holy Spirit is able to tell us what will happen in the future. Now the question is, are we listening? Because the Lord knows exactly what is happening, what will happen. But do we listen? Well, today we are talking about you. I am talking about you today. Because you are a hero. Now you are thinking, am I a hero? Am I a hero? I don't see myself as a hero. How can I be a hero when, when I barely can fulfill minimum obligations? You know, some people feel that way. Maybe, my friend, you are one of those who feel like, no, I don't think I can be a hero. You know, I, I am just surviving here. And when you take a look of the image on the screen of this superhero in his superhero outfit, getting ready to go and help people that are coming in an airplane that is about to hit the ground. Do you feel that you can do something about it? <laughs> because honestly, that image is not too optimistic. <laughs> it's just a little kid. And sometimes we might feel that way. Sometimes we might feel like it is way too much going on out there. I'm just a little guy here, a little girl. I'm just a little somebody. I don't see how I can do anything for people in these days. Well, the truth of the matter is sometimes we cannot even help our own selves. <laughs> sometimes we are just like that. We just see our own limitations within certain contexts. You know, let, let me get, take you to different scenarios so you will understand what I'm saying. There are moments in life, you know how, how funny things happen in life, that there are moments when you have great health. And there are moments when your health is all the way down. 
When you have great health, you do things, you are ready to conquer everything, go to the Everest, <laughs> you are ready to skydiving, right? When you feel strong, when your health is there, you are able to even sleep just a few hours and keep on going. But there are seasons, my friends, <laughs> when, when our health is not that way. It's the other way around. We are all the way down. And then we are asking somebody, can you bring me a glass of water, please? <laughs> because we barely can move. Same thing happens with money. There are seasons in life when we have abundance. And we shall say, how much do you need? Here's the check. Here's the card. Buy everything you guys need. Isn't it wonderful when we are on top? What is that song that Karen Carpenter sings, sweetheart? What is that song that Karen Carpenter sings? Top of the world. I'm on top of the world. It's great to feel when you are at the top of the world. But sometimes it's not that way. Sometimes we have very little money. Sometimes we have zero money. We have no money and then there are needs. And you know, the same thing applies to everything else. Sometimes for those who are working for a company, they have a job offer coming from this company, a job offer coming from this other company. And then you are in a position that you say, well, they really want me. I can choose. I can pick. <laughs> and there are seasons when you are without a job and knocking doors, begging people. Who can give me a job? Whatever. I just need to work. If you have your own business, it happens the same, the same thing. Sometimes you have so many businesses, you just don't have even time to eat. <laughs> Isn't it true? Sometimes you are so busy, you don't have time for anything. And there are seasons where it's the other way around. You have your own business and you are just distributing business cards everywhere. And you are just posting in social media about your services and because life is just like that. And depending how you feel and how things are, now you go to that image, you are that little boy with this outfit and you see the urgent situation out there, depending how you feel, then you will respond. If you are on the top of the world like Karen, <laughs> and that song, you will go and defend those people in the airplane. But when you are feeling down, when you are broke, or when you have difficulties, emotional difficulties, or poor health, you just think, I cannot go anywhere. I barely can walk. So, are we a hero? Are you a hero? Well, I will show you that you are a hero. You will see this. In order to, to become a hero, because you have the ability to be a hero, I want you to see that you need to use four things that you possess. The first one is skills. You have skills. You might not be able to fly <laughs> like Superman, but there are some skills that you possess. Same thing is with your talents and your abilities. Do you need to be able to have an inventory, a list of your skills and talents and abilities? Because those are your resources. Sometimes your resources are material resources, financial resources. You know, sometimes your resource is a contact, a name with a phone number. That is a great resource. And you can become a hero for somebody just by providing the name and the phone number of somebody that a third person needs. So you are a hero. You just need to know exactly what is exactly what you are able to do. So quickly, let me ask you this. Are you aware of your skills and talents and abilities? Are you aware of those skills? Because honestly, there are, there are some areas where we are really good at, and there are other areas when, where we really are not good at. 
You know, I am aware of the areas where I am good at, and I am very aware of the areas where I am not good at. Today, here in the church, as we come inside of the building, we face a gigantic problem. <laughs> there is something going on in the Bible study, study room. And there is water coming down. You know, friends that are watching from other states <laughs> and other countries. Here in Texas, we had, right now here in West Texas, we had a, a very difficult week. We all know. We, we people of Odessa, we know about the situation. Many places without electricity, water, etc. And uh, issues with plumbing, correct? Well, guess what? This morning we had one of those issues here. And pipes, uh, did they bust out or something? I believe so. So, well, we just walk there and then I just see like it's a gigantic shower coming in the Bible study room and the rugs. Oh, boy. Well, let me tell you something. Of course, that's upsetting and it's concerning because something we got to do about it. But uh, honestly, I don't know much about plumbing or water or many of those things. I, I think I should learn, probably. But I just thought, I know what I can do. I can prepare everything for the service. And that is something that I will leave for later. And let's see what happens. And well, here we go. Somehow, some of you guys helped us today. Praise God. Praise God. You are here helping Ronnie and Wendy and Zeke and Ray and Dan. You can do something for us because I don't know what to do. And still I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, I know what to do. I can pray. I can ask God and then I will start trying to figure out what's the solution. But I know where my skills are. So I am able to help people based on my skills and abilities. So can you. You can do the, the same thing, my friend. There are areas where you are good at and there are areas where you are not good at. What is what you can do? That's the first thing. You need to be aware of your skills and abilities. Now you are wondering, where can I help? Where can I become a hero? Well, first of all, the first place where you need to become a hero is in your own home. There is the first place. You know, because honestly, this is like, with all respect for those who like mission trips. I love mission trips. I became a missionary and I have traveled for many countries doing missionary work. But uh, there is a... There is an idea about those uh, mission trips that uh, some people have shared with me. <laughs> Very interesting. They say, I like to go on mission trips because I like to go and help people out there for a week or three days or whatever, you know, where the poor are or needy ones are, are etc. But they have said to me, well, you know, I go and I love it and I work hard and I pay and I give money and I help them. That's great. Oh, but it's so great when I come back to my house because then I don't have to do anything else. You know? Because honestly, it's easier just to go and do something for somebody eventually, sporadically, periodically, if you like. But in your house, probably you think, I don't think I necessarily have to do much here in my home. And uh, this is the, the main thing place where we all need to be heroes, my friends, in our own home. Because think about this. What do we think about somebody that lives in our home and goes all the time to help everybody? All the time. Just a phone call, a text message. Not even that. A simple post in social media and here we go. Our, whoever lives in the house, superhero goes and helps everybody. But anything you ask to this superhero in the house, he or she doesn't do it. So it's a big contradiction. So where is where we need to start 
helping and becoming a superhero is in our own home. There. Where else? Well, in your workplace. <laughs> Naturally. You know, I keep saying this to everybody. You should be grateful you have a job. And when you are in the workplace, stop playing with your phone. You don't need the phone to work, my friend. That's right. it's, it's just in case an, there is an emergency. If there is an emergency, there is something invented about several decades ago. It's called 911. Mm -hmm. If there is an emergency, wherever you are, distant from your family, you won't be able to get that quick than all the responses that you can get from 911. When you are in your workplace, be a hero by doing your job and start, st stop wasting the time yeah. because you are being paid to work. Right. You, you don't need to be playing with your phone. No. And you don't need to be just talking with the co-workers. You know, anyone who hires somebody to do a job, especially if, if this person is being paid by the hour, <laughs> and you have somebody that is being paid by the hour, and you hire this person. You are just watching this person, right? You just, you just take a look of your watch. So far, 15 minutes. Have done nothing. How do you feel? You start to feel uncomfortable. Half hour later, barely is starting to open the toolkit. Yeah. 45 minutes later, you are angry. Yeah. Because... Somebody, maybe you, my friend, you are not being a hero in your workplace. You do your job in your workplace. Help everybody else in the workplace. You know, it's interesting. People are calling their supervisors. Sir, I want to ask you if I can take the rest of the day off because there is a situation here, whatever, whatever, and I would like to help them. You know, we need to help others. Your supervisor says, sure, go ahead. Don't come, back. Don't come back. But the supervisor is thinking, how come you are so willing and eager to go help somebody else, continue being paid, but when we are asking you to help other co-workers here, you don't want to do that. Yeah. How come? It's a big contradiction. The same concept. Yeah. You are a hero in your home. You are a hero in your workplace. You are a hero in your church also. In your church, and we have an example today here with the plumbing, but honestly, for you, my friend, that you are, I don't know where, watching, and thank you for watching, there is a church where you probably can attend, or you are even a member of that church. Help there. Be a hero for your church, and also with your family and friends. Where? I told you where. When? Well, when there are emergencies. <laughs> if somebody calls you, hello, it's because there is an emergency. <laughs> you don't need to be that clever to understand somebody needs your help. Go and provide that help. And of course, there are special events. In your family, in your workplace, there are activities that are planned. Well, help then. Be a hero there. You can do it. Use your skills. You have to be aware, my friend, of your limitations. Sometimes when we are in the top of the world again, right? We feel, ah, I can do a lot of things. <laughs> well, yes, but there are limitations. You can just do something, not everything. You know what happens with those, and I sometimes make that mistake, trying to be a superhero. I just overuse all my energy in certain projects or doing some things that I forget even to, to eat well or rest well or take care of my own health. And then what? Bungun, I say, bungun. <laughs> Why is that? We crash because we just used and overused our own energy. Our own money, same thing. You are trying to help everybody with your money, and then it, it is the 12th of the month. You're going to get paid at the end of the month, and you are broke. Broke, broke, broke. Do you like that? No. 
Well, why is that? Because you try to help people and you are not thinking of your limitations. You need to consider the context, my friend. There is a fire, literally, there is a fire in a house. You want to help? Are you equipped to help somebody in the middle of a fire? You have to be aware of the context. There are certain things that you don't, you don't need to be involved with because it's more dangerous for everybody. Let me give you examples where you have to be very, very careful. When there are two people fighting, <laughs> whether it's husband and wife or two guys in the traffic or two ladies in the grocery store fighting for an avocado. Or what was, no, no, I don't want to use that noun. Another, other item that this week, milk, milk. There was an issue, eggs. Imagine two ladies fighting for a carton of eggs there. You know, you, you want to help people that are fighting, right? Your family, friends, co-workers, etc. Be aware of the context, especially the, if there is a fight you know what the scripture says? It says that when you try to get into a fight, it's like trying to separate two dogs. <laughs> you have to be aware of the context. You want to help? Think about how can you help two people that are fighting. And of course, you need to consider the victims. Do you know that some people just love to be victims all the time? There are people that that is exactly the role that they play 24-7. And I have, to, I, have, I have told you about the story of the, the song that they sing. is the poor me song, you know? Poor me, poor me, always poor me. So you have to be aware of the kind of victims, people that are in need. Sometimes it's true, but not always it's true, my friends. You know, friends, we like to help here in the church. Every week we have phone calls. Every week, people asking for money. Help me because of this. Help me with rent. Help me to, to pay my water bill, my electric bill, my groceries, my gas, etc. But sometimes the phone calls are even more interesting. Example, somebody called and said, uh, I'm calling you from Louisiana. Imagine, how far are we from Louisiana? A day driving? Okay. I'm calling you from Louisiana. My name is uh, Douglas. Are you the pastor? Yes, sir. How can I help you, Mr. Douglas? <laughs> and I just see nightmare coming on. <laughs> yes, Mr. Douglas, what can I help you? Well, my son, Jimmy, is on I-20 near Odessa. And he has no money, and his car is broken down. And I wanted to know, if you are the kind of Christian, oof, <laughs> that you can help people. <laughs> Man, they just love to put you in a, such a predicament. It makes you feel uncomfortable. It makes you feel awful about yourself. And I was just thinking, what have, what I have done to you, Mr. Douglas, to call me to put me in this situation? You have to be aware of the victims. Some people are experts in manipulation, my friend. So you, you want to be a hero, but you have to be aware. Your limitations, the context, and the kind of people that are looking for help. How are you going to help? Obviously, the way that we can help people, the way that you can help everybody is through love. You must have love in your heart. You must have faith. You know, when somebody's talking to you, telling your, your story, give them the benefit of the doubt. Show them that you understand their needs, you know? We call that empathy. Yeah, I understand, Mr. Douglas. I, I see your predicament. <laughs> Poor Jimmy. And uh, I want you to know that I'm glad that you called me because that means that you believe in God, right, Mr. Douglas? Yes, sir. And I am sure you have raised Jimmy the right way, right? Going to church. Believe in the Bible, right, Mr. Douglas? Uh, yes, sir. 
Okay, so you have faith, right? We have faith. The Lord will help you. And we will try to find ways to help you. You speak to people with love, my friend. You share your faith with them that things are going to be better for everybody. Those are the words you need to say. Always be positive when there is someone in need. You can be a hero just by saying to anybody, I understand your pain. I want to help you. And I believe the Lord is going to help you. This is going gonna, is gonna to be okay. This is going to be okay. And there, in a joyful way, you will start to find out how can you help this person based on your abilities, your skills, and considering your limitations, etc. You have to be joyful. Friends, sometimes we are in the midst of situations that forces us to be in the not comfortable places when we are helping people. How do you feel about receiving a phone call at 2 a.m. about one of your friends that isn't involved in a car accident? How do you feel about that? Well, this is kind of, well, but it's your friend, right? And then you found out that he was drunk or high on drugs. <laughs> wow. Well, you just think, oh, the message on Sunday was about being a hero, about helping people. So I do have a car. I can get up. So honey, I'll be back. You put your coat, you get your keys, go help your friend. You go. Sometimes you are in very difficult situations, but even though it's awful, you're going to be loving with faith and cheerful, joyful. Will you help the ways that you can to this person? And here is the bad news. When you are helping this individual, you will find that some of those individuals that are in trouble, they are the most ungrateful people <laughs> on earth. People that are in trouble asking for your help. And they don't have even the right way to ask for help. But you are there because you want to help them. Most of those people are so ungrateful. So entitled, they don't have manners to talk to you or asking you for ten dollars for something or a ride to a special place. They are just like that. But you you cannot lose your joy. But eventually you help this guy, and now at three thirty in the morning you drop him finally somewhere. And you are thinking, I have to get up early tomorrow for work. I'm going to go back home. I'm going to sleep a couple of hours. And, you know, it is what it is, we say, right? So you go back to your home, get into your sheets, and you are there just thinking. He never said even thank you. <laughs> kind of thinking. He didn't even say thank you. And that happens to you. You are moving furniture for people. You are helping people in many ways. Yeah. Then is when you need to realize that when you help people, you need to do it for God's glory. You cannot help people because you want to look good. You want to help people because it's for God's glory, my friend. You have to think of eternity. That's what you need to think. You are aware of your context, right? You are aware of the victims. You are aware of the, your limitations. And you are using your skills and you have love and faith and you are doing it for God's glory because you are thinking of eternity. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about the days when we will be there in heaven and the Lord is going to play the videos of our responses to certain situations? <laughs> Ooh, that would be something, right? Oh, Gian, I'm happy you are in heaven. Me too, Lord. That was something happened. I love the trip. Going the transition was great. Yeah, I'm happy. Eat your food. You love candy. There you go. And by the way, I want to show you. This is my new favorite candy. It's the Dove milk chocolate. You want one? Okay, get it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there, there you go. So the, 
<laughs> so the Lord says, here is your candy, and I am happy right in heaven. And then imagine the Lord says, Jean, I want you to come with me to the video room. I want, I want to play some videos of you from, from my Victory Church YouTube channel. No, from your life. What do you mean by that? Let me show you. And then he plays the videos of the, that day when somebody called me because needed something. And then my response. And I'm in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> and he says, what do you have to say about that? Oh, that's embarrassing. And I'm thinking, I hope he's not going to play the video of this particular moment when I remember I was even nasty. And then he says, but this is not too bad. Let's watch this other. Oh, please, Lord, don't do that. That's what I am saying to you, my friends. You have to be conscientious that eventually we will, we will give an account of our actions to God in, in eternity. But the good thing is that he is going to be focused more than anything in the good things we do. Absolutely, because he's loving. We are forgiven. He's not going to tell us out there, Jian, you suck. <laughs> you know? No, he's not going to say that. You are horrible. No, he might tell me, you know, you could do this and you didn't do it. Maybe, you know, but he's going to focus on the good things that I have done in my life. The Lord is going to show you in eternity the good things you have done for others. Think of eternity, my friend. Think of eternity. How are you going to help? I told you. Now, listen to this beautiful scripture. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Let's read it all together. Trust the Lord completely and don't depend on your own knowledge. With every step you take... Think about what he wants, and he will help you go the right way. He will help you, my friend. You know, sometimes you are, you are thinking, well, I really don't know what to do in this situation. I really don't know. You know, the first scripture that I gave you in John, it says that the Holy Spirit will tell you what will happen. Let me put that scripture with this together and take you to a beautiful place where you have been. This is you doing anything, whether it's cooking, whether it's shopping, whether it's watching a video, whether it's just sitting there drinking your cup of coffee in the morning, or you are in the shower, or you are driving, or you are working with your tools. It doesn't matter. Suddenly, please pay attention. Suddenly, there is something, that a thought that comes to your mind. And you are in the midst of doing that, but suddenly you stop. Because the thought has to do with somebody. Somebody. And you see in the screen of your imagination, the face of that individual. You stop. You see the face of that individual. And if you just don't care, this is what you're going to do. <laughs> what I am thinking. And just move forward. But if you care, you will continue trying to understand what is happening. You see that person in the screen of your imagination. And you try to understand what's going on. Well, this is what I, where I want you to see the two scriptures that I gave you. How the Holy Spirit will show you that this person that the Lord is putting in your mind, that face and the screen of your imagination, needs your help. When you are thinking about somebody in a random way, do you understand what random means, right? right. It's all of a sudden. Without any reason, suddenly you are thinking of somebody. You see that, that person's face, or you see the name, or you see certain context. If you pay close, close attention to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you, 
what's going on with that individual. And then you will be able to pray for that individual. And eventually, listen to this, listen to the scripture. With every step you take, think about what he wants, what the Lord wants, and he will help you go the right way. The Lord will tell you exactly what is what you need to do with that individual. Then is when you become a hero. Because you are listening to him. You are listening to him. Next Sunday, I'm going to speak to you about monsters of today. And that has to do a little bit with cartoons, but not necessarily. <laughs> but I hope that you will be here. Monsters of today will be the topic for next Sunday, February 28th. Worship service 2, 31. But again... Today we are speaking about you are a hero. You are that little person looking at the emergency situations that are hard for others. What do you do? My friend, very important, don't look for human recognition. When you see Opportunities to help people, please do not look for human recognition. Right. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. You know what you need to do is you just need to think that the reward comes from the Lord. But if you are helping somebody, if you are hoping that somebody else will say, oh, you are wonderful. You just mess it up. When you are helping anybody, even in your own home, my friend, listen carefully, please. When you are even in your own home helping somebody, do not look for human recognition. Don't make that mistake. Well, look, everything that I do for you. Don't we say those things? <laughs> it's a mistake. The reward comes from our Lord. Whatever you do in your home, in your workplace, for the community. How many things you do and nobody sees that? You stop in the middle of the road because you saw something, an object, and you know how dangerous is that. And you take your time, even if it's a little bit dangerous, remove the object out of the traffic and Maybe nobody will say even thank you. Maybe nobody will be ever aware that you saved people from an accident where people could die. Don't look for human recognition. Your reward comes from the Lord. Look at this beautiful scripture in Matthew chapter 6. Oh, my friends, if you don't get excited about this scripture, oh, listen. When you do something good, don't do it in front of others so that they will see you. Your father can see what is done in private and he will reward you. Matthew 6, 1 and 4. You are a hero using your own skills. Even if the heroic action will save just simply a cat or a bird or one person. Why not? Who says that a hero has to save a whole country or the whole world? Only Ethan Hunt can do that. <laughs> you know? But the rest of us, we just can help one person at a time, maybe. Maybe. But every day we can do heroic actions, helping people. And when you do something good, don't do it in front of others. So they will see you. No. Your father can see what is done in private and he will reward you. Would you like to become a hero today, my friend? My dear friend watching today, would you like to do that? The way to become a hero is by becoming a child of God. And I want to give you the opportunity today. Surrender to the good Lord. Give your heart to the Lord. Because that's the first step 
to start this beautiful race, the, the final stage of your life, which is when you become a child of God. From here is victory after victory. Fights and battles, but you always win because the Lord is with you. How do you do that? Well, you do that when you open your heart. And I invite you today, if this is the first time that you want to give your life to the good Lord, or maybe you want to reconnect with the good Lord, there is a prayer on the screen that I would like you to say it with me. So, what if you join me today and say with me, Dear God, here I am feeling convicted. I know, Lord, I can do more. I know I am able to help someone. Lord, you are the one that I want to adore. You are my God. I open my heart to you, Lord. I confess my sins before you. I want to obey you and trust you and serve you forever, my Lord. Starting today, I want to see life and people exactly as you do. Please help me, Lord, to become the person you want me to be. My friend, all begins here on this beautiful cross where the Lord Jesus saved us by dying for us. What if you say with me, I am forgiven by Jesus. My Lord can do everything. His word is true and active in me. My life is going to be great and blessed in 2021. Friends, thank you so much for coming up to church. You are blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a beautiful rest of your Sunday and see you next Sunday. Bye. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know. you for watching Victory Church, please feel free to contact us. Our email address is info at vchurch.us and our phone number is 432-614-9798.